All right, engineers, so in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a nice little overview, very, very brief, not very long, of all of these subcortical descending tracks. Now, when I say subcortical, why am I saying that? Because if you remember, we talked about the corticospinal tracks, the lateral and the anterior or ventral corticospinal tracks, and we talked about their, uh, their, their function in being able to allow for very fine and precise movements via the lateral, and we said that the, the, the anterior or ventral was more specific for the axial musculature, right? Well, these tracks are just helping in that process. They're being a, a, an assistance to this process, right? But they're not having conscious awareness. They're, they're not, we're not consciously aware of these different types of movements, right? So that's really important to remember for these subcortical tracks. Now, what were these subcortical tracks that we talked about? We're just gonna have a very brief overview just to make sure that we hit home the points. Vestibulospinal tract. Remember what I told you, I want you guys to not have to remember every single tract so specifically when you can make it so much easier on yourself and you can say vestibulospinal tract, pontoreticulospinal tract, and the most simplistic way their function is both to be able to control what type of muscles? Extensor muscles. Well, how do they differ? They differ in the nuclei. Well, where does the actual vestibulospinal tract start? It starts with the vestibular nuclei within the medulla. What does it do? It sends down descending fibers. Okay, what part of the spinal cord does it go into? Technically, it goes into the anterior or ventral white columns. Okay, what does it do? It activates alpha and gamma motor neurons. Where do those alpha and gamma motor neurons go? Well, we said there's technically two different types of vestibulospinal tracts, a medial and a lateral. The medial is going to the head and neck musculature, right? And then the actual lateral is going to more of the axial and, some of the, and a lot of the appendicular skeleton, specifically for the extensor muscles, right? And we said that this is important why? Because we have structures in the inner ear which are detecting rotational acceleration, linear acceleration, and we want to be able to maintain our posture and our balance and our muscle tone and our coordination even in those movements. So having our head and neck move in coordination with those movements is important. Having our body have uh, anti-gravity muscles and posture to maintain whenever we're moving rotationally and linearly is important. And if you remember I said one last thing was that this vestibular nuclei to coordinate with the head and neck muscles, we have the fibers going upwards to so the cranial nerve three, four, and six via the medial longitudinal fasciculus to coordinate our, our gaze, our eye movements with whatever object we're looking at as we're rotating or linearly accelerating, right? And then we said one other thing. We said that this system can't operate on its own. It can't do that. We said that we have to have some type of regulation or brake system onto this vestibular nucleus because if it wasn't controlled, it could cause extensor hypertonus. We don't want that. So who was helping that? The red nucleus. The red nucleus was kind of putting the brakes on that system and saying, hey, not too much going down. We don't want that. So that's the importance for this vestibular spinal tract. The pontoreticular spinal tract, what did we say? It goes to the extensor muscles. Okay, simple as that. Where does the actual nuclei act? Where does it originate? It's in the pons. It's a part of the reticular formation. Okay, what is it doing? It's sending down descending fibers via the ponto reticular spinal tract into what? Into the anterior ventral white column. Okay, where is it going? It's going to alpha and gamma motor neurons within the anterior or ventral gray horn. What are they going to? Extensor muscles. These extensor muscles are important to be able to contract and help to assist the vestibulospinal tract. Okay, then we said, what is its stimulus? We said the main stimulus, since it doesn't really get any cortical information, its main stimulus is through the ascending tracks. The ascending tracks, as they're coming upwards, they can give off collaterals to let the reticular formation know of what is going on. So that's a beautiful system. So combining these two makes it a lot easier for you, all right? Then we gotta combine these two, the rubrospinal and the medullary reticulospinal. Now the rubrospinal, what do we say? Both of these guys, actually both of them, we said they control flexor muscles. Rubrospinal is more with the upper limb flexion, okay? They do say in certain research that it does help to keep the lower limb flexors in check though. Now, where do they differ, okay? This rubrospinal starts in the red nucleus, which is in the midbrain, okay? From there, you have to remember that this crosses. What is that cross called? It's called the ventral tegmental decussation. There's a special, special area in the, um, uh, midbrain called the tegmentum, right? And it's going to cross in front of that. So the ventral tegmental decussation is where they cross to the opposite sides and then descend down as the rubrospinal tract. The rubrospinal tract goes to what? 
It goes into the lateral white column. They say that it can even be intermixed with the lateral corticospinal tracts. Then it gives off collaterals, mainly within the upper uh, spinal cord. Why? Because it's mainly going to the upper limb flexors. But again, they do say that it can go down possibly because it keeps in check the lower limb flexors. It stimulates alpha and gamma motor neurons to go to these flexor muscles. If it's alpha, contracts it, shortens and lengthens it. If it's gamma, it's keeping those muscle spindles tight to allow for nice uh, firm contractions, not limpy contractions. Then we said that the red nucleus, how does it get stimulation? Well, it gets information from the cerebellum because the cerebellum is constantly being updated about the proprioceptive information of the body. The special nuclei, the deep cerebellar nuclei that tell the red nucleus this, is the globose nucleus and the emboliform nucleus. And then we said that the cortex, the cerebral cortex, can tell the red nucleus. Remember, this was the corticospinal tracts. They can give off collaterals to tell the red nucleus because the red nucleus is going to assist the lateral corticospinal tract, specifically in limb flexion. All right, and upper limb at that. All right, so the last one, we said, okay, this one was flexion. This one's also controlling flexor muscles. Okay, what's the difference? The nuclei starts here within the medulla. It's in the medulla, and it's a part of the reticular formation. Okay, where does it go? The descending fibers via through this medullary ponto reticulospinal tracts, I'm sorry, medullary reticulospinal tracts is going to go into the lateral white column of the spinal cord. As it goes into the lateral white column of the spinal cord, what does it do? It gives off its axons into the anterior or ventral gray horn at many different levels of the spinal cord. Activates alpha and gamma motor neurons, which go to what type of muscles? Flexor muscles. And this is supposed to assist the rubrospinal tract. Now, what is the stimulus for this guy? The stimulus for this guy is mainly going to be heavy descending connection from the cortex via what's called the corticoreticular fibers. As these fibers are coming down, they let the reticular formation know. The reticular formation says, okay, got the information I need. And remember, we have ascending tracts, like dorsal column, medial limb, meniscal pathway, or we even have the anterior lateral system or the spinal thalamic tract, the spinal reticular tract, so many different tracts. They can let this reticular formation know. And that can also control the descending information downwards. And where do these guys go? Again, they go into the lateral white column, activate alpha motor neurons, gamma motor neurons, which cause the flexor muscles to contract. All right, Nigerian, so I hope all this stuff made sense. I really do hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you guys did, please hit that like button, comment down in the comment section, please subscribe. All right, Nigerians, please also, if you have time, go check out our uh, Facebook, our Instagram, maybe even our Patreon account. We truly would appreciate it. All right, Nigerians, as always, until next time.